Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today in our YouTube series, Creating Your Own Success. This week, we have Series 6 in our continued series, um, ready for you to watch and learn. And of course, we have Anne Marie Sabbath with us today, and we are going to be discussing some more topics from our wonderful book. I will put all the links below, so make sure you check it out. And this book has been an amazing guide, especially for me. I've been really learning on the second read, so many little nuances that I completely forgot about in my own life. So please be sure to check out what self-made millionaires do that most people don't. And again, I'll have all the links for you in the description below. And also, Anne-Marie is giving away a copy of this book. So if you would like a copy, whether it's a auditory copy or a PDF or a hard copy, make sure you leave us a comment below and we will make sure that your name gets put in our generator and you will be able to be eligible to win one of these books. So definitely make sure to do that. And of course, subscribe to our wonderful series. We would be ever so grateful if you could hit that subscribe button. And there's also a little bell notification button. You could hit that too, and that will just give you an alert to let you know that one of our series has been uploaded to YouTube. So enough of my babbling. Anne-Marie, our success guru. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hello, Carol Ann. Thanks for you? having me. I'm looking forward to doing this session. Awesome, awesome. We have some great stuff to talk about today. Today we're going to be discussing about listening. Now, a lot of folks may not realize the value and the importance of listening, and Anne-Marie is going to go over four of these tips and some other pointers about listening directly from her book. So, Anne-Marie, can you tell us why listening has anything to do with creating your own success? A lot of folks may be saying, I don't get the correlation. Can you clear that up for us, please? I sure will. Well, as you know, IQs, our, our intellectual quotients, are considered very important. However, as people are growing in their profession, whether they're in-house or they're entrepreneurs, it's essential to have a high EQ or emotional quotient. And one area for EQ, an EQ is being a good listener. People see you as interesting when you are sincerely interested in them. And so power listening, which is a lifelong skill for all of us, is essential. And you're right. In this book, uh, what self mango do that most people don't, we talk about four listening tips. One is stay in the moment. So shut every dinger, ringer, anything that does any form of uh, movement and make sure it's off. So focus on what the person is saying. I'll give you a quick scenario with that. I fly more than I drive and I was on a flight, oh goodness, a three hour flight somewhere. And the man next to me who happened to be a, a neurosurgeon, I started talking. And so I continued to let him talk. He never asked me about him myself, which was fine. I know about me, I wanted to hear about him. At the end of the conversation, two hours later, I shook hands with him and I said, thank you for making this trip go fast. And I introduced myself and he said, my pleasure, it was such an interesting conversation. Well, I had not said a word, believe it or not. And so again, power listening is important for establishing relationships. Another tip for listening is let your body language know uh, tell people that you are listening. A lot of people are low keyed and they simply want to listen. So have your hands on the conference room table. Have people know through being focused on them, your expressions, that you genuinely are listening. Another is, and we said this before, people see it was interesting when you're sincerely interested, wait to ask for your advice, for your two cents those comments will be seen as much more valuable, or perhaps we should say heard. And another very powerful listening tip is before you or I say something, 
echo or summarize what you heard the last person say before you put in your two cents. It's a powerful skill to bridge or to echo. So that really shows the other person that you were paying very close attention and it makes an impact and an impression on them, right? Exactly. You just echoed what we said. You bet. Awesome. I love that. Listening skills are so very important. They're everything, everything. Um, next, you discuss a topic that's very dear to me, and that is don't be afraid to ask. Very, very important. I fully believe that I would not be a business owner today if I didn't take that advice. So can you bring some key pointers up and also share um, that little story that you have in your book about the powerful um, results of, you know, asking and being a little persistent, possibly? Definitely. You have, some people have it in their constitution to be able to be a little more forward and ask. Other people are shy and they have to really get over that in order to be successful in life. The story that I put in the book was when I was 22 years old, I uh, studied to be a teacher, a Spanish teacher, in fact. And so I had applied many places and there was a particular place where I wanted to actually teach. And so I sent the resume, I followed up, and when I followed up, I learned that they did not have the resume. So I got the person's name and I asked if I could send it again to her attention. The woman was the assistant of the uh, superintendent of that particular school district. She said yes. And so I sent it a few days later. I followed up with her and she said, Anne Marie, I'm so glad you're calling because Mr. Shreve, who is the superintendent, actually is interviewing someone for that Spanish position. And so you may not even need to come in. And at that point, I was shocked. And I said, Mrs. Marsh, you know I'm sincerely interested in this position. I've sent my resume twice. You have it in your hand. I have one favor to ask you. And she said, what is that? I said, I can't even believe that I asked this. I said, could you slip a note under the door of Mr. Shreve and ask him not to offer that candidate the position until he and I meet. And there was a dead silence as though the woman was saying, you have guts, girl. And before long, I heard her say, all right. I said, thank you. Well, she said, I said, may I call you back tomorrow morning to see when we can schedule an appointment or how he reacted? And she said, yes, she did it. I was sweating bullets. Well, I didn't have to wait until that next morning. Later that afternoon, she called me and Mrs. Marsh said, be in here at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Mr. Shreve will see you. Well, not only did I, was I there a quarter to eight, I had a box of Godiva chocolates for her and I got the job. That, That's brilliant. Again, I was scared to death. However, when you know that you cannot, you're not going to get in trouble. You're not going to go to jail. What's going, what's the worst thing that can happen? And I knew that I was more than qualified based on my experience in college and studying abroad, et cetera. So the key is do not be afraid to ask. And we've said this before, surround yourself with people who have the confidence, who give you the confidence to do whatever it takes to make something happen. It's so important asking. It, it really is. Now, um, do you have any advice for folks that are just like petrified to ask? Like what would be a good place to start, do you think? Well, number one, get over it. That's my strength. Number two, one of the reasons I'm not afraid to ask to this day is I always, always am interested and willing to do favors for other people. I sincerely believe that helping other people gives them that extra push. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not afraid to ask because I know that I would, if I were in the place of the person being asked, I would do it in a minute. So that to me is important. Yes. Number two, again, don't think twice about helping someone. It doesn't matter who it is, what it is. It can be holding an elevator door. It can be holding a door open. It can be 
staying a little longer to help someone with something. So when you have that in your uh, inner core, then it's much easier to be able to ask. And the last is building on the first two. Make sure you have more you owe me's than I owe you's. When That's you awesome. do that, it's important. And so that means don't burn bridges, do favors for other people, send a follow-up note after someone does something for you. Because when you do ask, the person is going to know that you really do need help. So it sounds very simple. However, by paying things forward, by doing things for other people, when you need a favor, it's so much easier to be able to ask. And that segues perfectly into what you're talking about next, which is paying it forward. Now that those words became very popular, um, I'd say about 10 years ago when the law of attraction came to be. Yes. So can you just briefly explain for some folks that don't know what that means and also just go over some key pointers, some simple examples of ways folks can pay it forward. Yes, paying it forward is do things without expecting anything in return. That's essential. By doing that, once again, you have the confidence to ask when you need help. Mm -hmm. So one example of one of the 30 self-made millionaires who I interviewed for this book is Jason Phillips. We talked about him last week. And he feels so fulfilled that his company is successful that what he does is he has an interest and need to mentor children. So what he does is he actually takes off work each week in order to teach children who may not have strong male role models. He teaches them martial arts. He teaches them how to build character. And by doing that, he feels like he in turn is paying it forward. So when he needs something, it is ready for him. So you have to believe in the law of the universe. You have to believe this is how it works. Help somebody on the road. When someone stops, it's stopped. You know what? If you can possibly help them, at least by calling 911, maybe they have a flat tire, or say, can I call AAA for you? Mm -hmm. And stay there. The key is, it's really important to do this. Another thing is pay it forward. If you know somebody has two things, in a grocery line and you have a whole day, an entire basket, let them go ahead of you. Are you kidding me? Or if you're not in a hurry and you're looking for a parking spot, let somebody else take the spot and look for another one. By doing this, when you need something, I'm telling you, it genuinely, genuinely works. Many people will go ahead, if they're in a coffee shop, if they're in a drive-through, mm. they will actually leave extra money and they will say, please allow the person who's behind me to have his or her meal paid for. And so maybe it's not going to pay for all of it. However, that $10 is going to help for at least a few of the things that they ordered. So the key is it's a way of saying you truly care and giving something without expecting anything in return. And you know what? It really pays big dividends. It does. It really does. The universe pays you back tenfold when you have simple acts of kindness like that. So that's that's brilliant. Love that. Um, in our next habit, which is habit 11, you talk about exercise. And then again, folks may not see the correlation between being success. What does that have to do with success? But it has a lot to do with it. Right, Anne-Marie? Can you talk about why making an exercise regime as a part of your life is essential? It's so important, and I despise exercising more than I can explain. However, the funny thing is, is thinking about it is so much harder than doing it. One of the things I started doing a year ago is at least five days a week I swim, and I am certainly not the greatest swimmer in the world. What you do is you schedule time to do it. You mm -hmm. tell yourself when you're going to do it, you get your bathing suit on, and you go. That's the end of the story. And by doing that, the beauty, the beauty of exercising, whether it's power walking, getting in those 10,000 steps, swimming, jogging, going on a treadmill, is it's not only good for the body, it's good for the soul. It's so good for the mind. It's amazing how you can clear your mind and the creative ideas 
that you can get. I can tell you, if I had a waterproof iPad, I'd never get out of the water. <laughs> That's funny. So it's a very, very important. And the way to do it is have your clothes laid out the night before. So if you work out, have them ready with your workout bag, everything, so that if you're going to work, have your gym bag packed and you're absolutely ready to do it. Have a mental regime and know that there's an end time as well as a beginning time. So once again, it makes such a difference. You have so much more energy, you're more creative, and you exercise for the health of it. That's all there's to it. And we're not talking about hours of exercise here. You can just exercise for 15, 20 minutes, whatever you can allocate time-wise, right? It's still exercise. Exactly. Schedule the amount of time each week that you will exercise and then break it into the number of days that you can. So once again, if you have to walk a little further, then do that. The idea is it doesn't matter what it is. It's what works for you. That's the key. And that is really exercising for the health of it is one of the 52 secrets for creating your own success. I can tell you firsthand, it really works. Wonderful. Um, next up, you talk about taking the time to think. And you talk about scheduling time to think. Now, that may seem odd to some folks. Can you talk about why that's so important and how to do that? Yes, you know, I really never recognized the importance of thinking and until about 25 years ago when I met John Pierce, who happens to be one of the 30 individuals. I had not talked to him literally for 20 years and I found him. He happens to live in Philadelphia. When I met John, he became my first financial advisor and he talks more than me, I must tell you. And I asked him, I said, John, what do you do when you're not working? He said, a few times a year, my father and I go to a retreat that is a silent retreat for the weekend. I say nothing. I said, I don't believe it. He said, I'm telling you. It is the most powerful weekend that I spend that quarter. And I thought about it and I thought, doesn't that make sense? Because when you hear yourself think, you can solve situations that may be plaguing your mind, you can come up with solutions. And so it's very important. And let me give you three reasons to take time to think. One, it genuinely recharges your brain. It helps you to make decisions during the day that would be maybe more difficult to handle. Another is stay in the shower five minutes longer. I can tell you the situation that you've been pondering may be solved because you have taken premeditated time to think. The last thing is you may be a better listener, both for yourself as well as for others when you take time to think because your mind will be clear. I love the shower tip. Um, a lot of people don't realize the power of just having, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to, and lots of times what I'll do is I'll think about what I'm going to think about in the shower. So like I'll pick a topic, something that's bothering me, and I'll say, okay, this is what I want to focus and process on. And like you said, nine times out of 10, I come out with a plan, a solution, a way out of it. It's brilliant to do that. So it thinking really is very important, right, Anne-Marie? It's extremely important. And once again, until you do it, you don't realize the power of it. Right. So having that quiet time where nothing will uh, will interrupt you. Yes. Great. Um, anything cohesively you want to put together from everything we discussed today, um, you know, in closing, any key points you want to go over? Well, I would say once again, ask yourself what you're doing now and ask yourself what you could add to what you're already doing. Because this is a matter of nurturing both your body and your mind. So once again, exercising for the health of it, taking time to think, being a listener, making a concerted effort. These are part of the 52 secrets for creating your own success. So I want viewers to know that it's really not only about the money. It's about the habits that we're talking about that we are sharing that assists people in creating their own success. 
Wonderful. Um, and, and again, Anne Marie interviewed um, how many folks? 30? 30 individuals who came from nothing and they wow. created their own success based on putting these habits into practice. And that's so powerful um, to, to be able to, to dig in and find out all the keys and then put them in a, in a book to share with the world. Um, it's great. Now, next for our series seven, we're going to be on habit 12. So if you have a copy of the book, be sure to read habit 12 and 13. We're going to be discussing things like having a good outlook um, on life and surround yourself with the people that you want your life to reflect. And Anne Marie will, of course, go into all that. Don't forget to leave a comment so you can win a copy of the book. And above all, please subscribe. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Anne Marie, thank you so much. All these nuggets of wisdom are so very appreciated. And I hope folks realize that you're paying, paying it forward in and of itself with this YouTube series by being able to help folks like us be successful. It's my pleasure, as are you paying it forward by allowing me to be your uh, individual to be able to make this series available to viewers. Thank you. Oh, I'm blessed to be able to do so. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie, and we'll see you next week. My pleasure. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.